What's going on guys? I got Pradeep on the line, the CEO of Solve Care. If you remember guys, we have covered this project extensively over the last year and a half, two years. The last interview that we did with Pradeep was absolutely explosive. Pradeep, how are you doing today, man? I'm really excited to be back and thank you for having me. And a lot to talk about, so very excited. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think to start off our interview, Pradeep, what I'm gonna do is recap a little bit. For anyone who's watching and hasn't seen the previous content that we have covered, but we had our first interview with you about four months ago. This interview became historical for our channel. In this case, Pradeep, I wanted to follow up with you guys because you guys have launched your care chain, the first layer two chain for healthcare, and you've moved on aggressively in many directions, which I'm sure everyone is dying to hear about. With you, Pradeep, and Solve care. I'd like to take a moment before we start with the interview questions that I have prepared here. I'm just going to run through a quick summary of how our first interview went four months ago. You worked with the US government and presidents on implementation of healthcare programs, including the Medicare and Medicaid, which is used by millions of people. Your previous company was on Inc. 505,000 fastest growing companies, and you were the chief innovative officer at Blue Cross Shield, right? This was, I believe, the biggest insurance company in the US. Is that correct, Pradeep? So Blue Cross is actually a consortium of multiple companies. So I was working for one of the Blue Cross Blue Shield. There are many. Okay. Combined, they are the largest, but they each Blue Cross is a separate company for a separate state. Okay, I see, I see. And now what you've evolved into more than six years that you've been building Solve Care. You guys are the first company in the world which launched blockchain-based platforms for healthcare. Amazing for the innovation of blockchain industry, crypto, healthcare in general. And you guys have already delivered networks for a huge healthcare players like Arizona Care Network, uh, one of the top accountable care organizations in the US and uh, Bo Ringer Ingelheim, which is again a top 20 global pharmaceutical company. Is that correct as well, Pradeep? Yes, that is correct. But they, those were our earlier customers, very early customers. Wow. Who adopted our platform in 18, 19, 20. That's great, Pradeep. So why don't we jump right into the new questions that I have for you today. I'm really excited for our interview. So thank you again for joining us. Are you ready for it? Absolutely, let's do it. The first question that I have, it doesn't seem very easy to change healthcare, right? It's such a, such a diverse industry and complicated industry at that. Fragile is a good word to describe it. You are investing Investing into building a very complex platform because there's no other way with all of the complexity of the healthcare to essentially go about this in the global healthcare industry, right? So who said that it's going to redefine all the transport industry and create a global car sharing economy in that sense, right? Same did Alibaba with their marketplace, Apple with their iOS and iPhones. Do you believe that Solve Care is the company that's going to redefine global healthcare? And if yes, how? So yes, you're right. Healthcare is complex and it is, but it's also universal. So every one of us needs health care. We, we were born into health care. We will pass away in the arms of health care. So we all need it regardless of our gender, society, economic or geography, it doesn't matter. And health care is complex because it has many dimensions. It has a clinical dimension about delivering care. It has a financial dimension about managing the cost of care. It has a administrative dimension about making sure that the right care is given to the right party at the right time. And then you have, of course, a regulatory dimension to it, which makes sure that all the parties are being treated fairly, the doctor, the patient, the pharmacist, the pharma, everybody. So it's a very complex industry, but what makes it more challenging is because you don't really have a common fabric on which people can transact. So every transaction is tied up to some very narrow relationship and, and silo. So it depends upon which hospital you go to, that'll determine the system you use, it, which depends upon which doctor you go to will determine what EMR system has your data. And this creates a lot of issues worldwide. So what we decided to do is to say, look, healthcare needs a common fabric, a fabric on which everybody can work with each other in a trusted way without blindly trusting each other. So this is a really good use case in that sense for a trust layer like blockchain, but it's very complex to deploy blockchain and healthcare unless you build a full stack. So the analogy I'll give you is very simple. You know, you cannot build a car if you only have four wheels. You need the transmission, the engine, the gearbox, the chassis, the doors and the wheels and steering wheel and everything else. So to put a car together for healthcare is very complex. We decided to do that because we feel that time is right. We started the journey six years ago and here we are. 
the rest is history. Pradeep, to be honest with you, to see the way that you guys have progressed has been just absolutely phenomenal and mind blowing to me. So kudos to you and your team for that. What exactly is gonna make SolveCare this new unicorn? I mean, you've, you've partly answered it in, in your previous answer, but is there anything else you'd like to add in that sense? Well, look, we're not the only ones who recognize the opportunity and the necessity of improving healthcare for all. And recent Horowitz is a very famous, very storied, very capable uh, investment firm in Silicon Valley behind many of the household names that we use today in our life. And they wrote a really interesting article earlier this year called The Biggest Company in the World. Now look it up, it's available online. It's a great, great article. It's lengthy. Uh, and it basically says that the next biggest company in the world, and they claim uh, and they surmise that it'll be bigger than Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon combined, will be a consumer healthcare company. And the logic being that it's the vastest industry in the world that hasn't yet been brought into the 21st century. And then they go on to explain that the way to transform healthcare and the company that does it would be consumer obsessed healthcare company that would bring the Apple experience and the transaction capability of Visa and the ease of choosing of Amazon together for healthcare. And the company that does that will practically own the world in terms of economic might. And this is a really well thought through article. And when I read it, I'm like, this is self care. This is self care defined to the T. Now, of course, we didn't know about this article six years ago when we started building self care, but that was exactly the vision. And we've been at it for six plus years. Now, does that automatically make us unicorn? No. But here is what makes us uh, a shoe and to be a very, very impactful player, a very large player in healthcare. One, we really understand healthcare. Second, we have taken the time to build a platform that actually serves all stakeholders, not a few. And third, we are using blockchain in such a creative way to build trust between parties that do not and should not trust each other blindly. And then on top of that, we built a payment system that's global and programmable. So basically you have programmable money that can be used to solve the complex healthcare payments. So you got transactions, you got business processes, you got relationship management, you got grandma friendly user experience, and you got solve token to facilitate payment between anybody and anybody uh, in the very complex healthcare space. So, you know, if there is a recipe for being a unicorn, you got that recipe right here and we are going to execute and execute and execute till we achieve the, the goal. But last thing I'll say is our goal isn't measured by a unicorn symbol or status. I am interested in fundamentally transforming access to care, affordability of care, and ease of getting care. I'm focused on how will our kids experience healthcare. And I'm focused on eliminating unnecessary pain and suffering that majority of humanity goes through, even though there are well-known remedies for well-known diseases. So to me, the, the factor that matters, the more than being called a unicorn or not, or being the biggest health company in the world, is how many people's lives we impact. And on that, we are well on our Your team told me that your platform uses zero knowledge. Explain if at all that is possible in healthcare. Absolutely, and it's needed. So let's take a simple example, very simple. I am looking for a pediatrician for my son, let's say, okay? And I live in Fort Lauderdale and I want to find out who's available, right? And before I find out who's available, tomorrow at 10 a.m., I should have to broadcast my identity. All I need to broadcast is that a certain disease condition, a certain type of a patient, you know, 80 year old boy with these conditions needs to be seen by a pediatrician with these kind of symptoms. Now, in a zero knowledge world, I should be able to broadcast that need on the chain, get every pediatrician on the chain, respond to that need, send me their availability card, send me their rate card, I choose the availability that I like, I choose the rate that I like, I click and say I'm making an appointment. They can even verify that I'm insured with a certain insurance company, let's say Blue Cross, because I can give them a token saying that I have a Blue Cross token. And then and only then, my identity needs to be revealed to them because I've agreed to be served by this physician. So in, that's a simple use case where a match between a patient and a doctor can be conducted in a zero knowledge. Till such time, both parties shake hands and agree to transact clinically, and then 
you share identity. That's a simple example, but let's take a more exciting example. We have just launched a really cool network called Care Trials, and we are going after a $50 billion a year waste problem where there are, at any given time, over 50,000 trials, clinical trials that are active in the world. But to manage these trials, the industry spends over 50 billion just trying to find the patients, talk to them, educate them, check their medical record, get them interested in the trial, get them enrolled, and then, and then conduct the trial. It's an incredibly inefficient industry, but even more worse is because it's so slow and cumbersome, really important drugs don't come to market for decades because the trials take so long. And then on top of it, you and I, who might have an interest in, let's say a particular trial around diabetes or hypertension or cholesterol, and I would have an interest in attending the trial, never find out about them. And if you do join a trial, you're worried about your identity being shared the, to the wrong people and your data being shared to the wrong people. So clinical trials is a zero knowledge implementation of solve care platform. How does it work? I can publish my demographic data. I can say my age, my, my gender, my general location, not my exact location, certain diseases that I might have family history of, at risk of, let's say my father who passed away from diabetes, so I obviously run that in my family history, so I'll mark that as a potential risk, and my willingness to travel 100 miles or less to attend a trial of five miles, whatever. And I can then be matched in as, I can publish that knowledge, with, uh, that data without revealing any identity. They can connect with me on the chain, the trials, they can match with me, they can transact with me, they can ask for my medical records, they can check everything about me. I can then at some point in time, ask them all the questions about risks, costs, compensation, everything. And then at the end of it, if I like the trial and what they're doing and what they're, what risks or, or um, procedures they are, they are checking, I can ultimately say, okay, I'm gonna join, join the trial. And then and only then I will reveal my identity. But my identity can be known to the chain. Uh, my data can be known to the chain, but nobody can read it without my permission. Nobody can keep it without my permission. And they're only share, seeing it for a duration of the match. So we essentially are building a zero trial knowledge, zero ZK trial management system, where everybody and anybody in the world first gets informed of the trial they're interested in, and they can connect and safely interact. So. My mom would consider joining a trial using that mechanism because she knows she's in control of her identity and data. Uh, short of that, she's never gonna consider joining a trial ever. So the point of having a zero knowledge implementation in healthcare, there are so many use cases. They all go back to having the trust of the patient to be able to deliver the outcome you want as a doctor, as a pharmaceutical company, as a diagnostic company, as a hospital. So ZK knowledge is really big in healthcare. It's very underutilized, but I predict that over the next five years, most healthcare transactions will become zero knowledge transactions. Because you, and more importantly, you will have much more consumer engagement than you have ever had before because the consumer can engage on their own terms. You wanna buy my medical data, my clinical records, I can sell it to you as long as they're de-identified and I know that you don't find out about my identity through the act of buying those records. Mm -hmm. when I, so there's hundreds of use cases where patient engagement in healthcare can be driven up by 10x, by 100x. And if you think about every healthcare enterprise, they all talk about how the patient is disengaged, how we don't really get patient involvement in treatments or in, uh, in uh, prevention or in wellness or in trials. Well, guys, you have absolute control over patient's identity and data. Why would I trust you with that information? And how would I know that you're not misusing it? That's why you don't get the engagement, a big part of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So zero knowledge systems will absolutely replace a lot of the current centralized web two systems that we have in healthcare. And it'll be good for humanity. And people will get paid for what they should get paid for and not have fear of being improperly targeted or discriminated. So. Zero knowledge is coming to healthcare whether you like it or not, and it's good for you and I. How is your care chain progress moving? How's that doing, Pradeep? So our care chain builds upon the core principles of our platform and brings it more into the fundamental transaction capability. If you remember, care chain is the first zero knowledge and proof of uh, authority, uh, proof of competency chain. And it goes back to the zero knowledge question. 
how do I know that the person I'm interacting with on the chain is actually a doctor? And how do I know that without asking them to share their identity, which they don't want to share with me? And why should they? Because I haven't yet paid them anything. So in the proof of competency matter to zero knowledge is that layer of uh, in blockchain that has never existed, but healthcare desperately needs. So the proof of competency certificate on the chain guarantees to me that the other side is indeed a clinically certified doctor, maybe certified in Nigeria, but I'll know that by looking at their proof of competency NFT. I don't need to know their identity, know they are a cardiologist who have been practicing for 25 years, went to Harvard school, you know, and have been practicing in Western Africa since they graduated. I can know all that, but I don't need to know anything more about them to say, okay, I got a doc on the other line, right? Right. Similarly, he can know about me that I'm a patient of a certain age with certain disease conditions, certain risks, certain geography, certain ability to pay, and we can be matched. Once we are matched out of millions of people and millions of options, and once you've shaken hands, then identity records, payments can flow between us. That's what our platform does. Right. So care chain makes all that very possible. So our platform does all, everything up to the point where the chain, with the addition of the care chain, we can now implement this proof of competency. Therefore, two parties who are talking to each other, who have never talked to each other before, have a chain to trust in terms of who the other party's qualifications are. And once you achieve that, then there's not a healthcare problem in the world we can't solve. So care chain plus a care platform, in our mind, will absolutely change healthcare. And care wallet in terms of consumer-obsessed, grandma-friendly user experience on top of everything gives us what we need. So, you know, it goes back to that recent Harvard's article, transactional capability, payment capability, and user experience. You need all three things. So care wallet is your user experience. Care platform is your transactional capability and care chain is your uh, relationship management and payment management. All together, we believe we have built the only complete stack for healthcare, kind of like salesforce.com or SAP, but built for healthcare and way more powerful. In solve care communications, I usually hear that your token, the solve token, uh, again, the ticker solve, is the token of healthcare. What gives you such confidence and how do you see it happening? That's a great question. So, you know, healthcare, if you just take, keep it simple. You got a patient view, you got a doctor view, you got a hospital view, you got a institutional view, you got a government view. Let's take each of them apart. So from a patient perspective, I need to be able to pay my doc, right? Um, I need to be able to get paid for selling my records. I need to be able to get paid for joining a trial. I need to be able to get a discount on prescription based on my insurance plan, whatever. All of these scenarios, I need to have a token that responds to my ability to pay the right party the right amount. So if I don't have that ability, I will need a multitude of vehicles. I will need a checkbook to write a, uh, to pay the doctor. I will need some kind of a, a bank account where I'm gonna receive uh, buyers from my trial company. I'm going to need a uh, third party payer like a TPA to handle my subsidies from the insurance company. So it's an absolutely multi-party chaos that my grandma would never know how to deal with. Which is why most people say, I don't really understand the bills coming to me. I have no idea what are these bills arriving at. One from the hospital, one from the doctor, one from the lab. It's total chaos. So what we can do with Solve is to make the patient's experience very, very simple. Where all the bills from all over the world get normalized to Solve and you pay using your solve balance and you get paid in solve regardless of the dollar value. So if you are getting paid a thousand dollars to join a trial, you get equivalent solve appear in your wallet. You can spend them to buy a prescription or pay your doctor. So it creates this common consumer friendly currency, which fits every need the patient has. On the receiving side, the doctor can just send a bill card no matter where they are, if you're doing cross-border consultation and you will get payment in Sol, which converts to your local currency. So it simplifies payments, right? I mean, if you think about it, what does a credit card do? It simplifies payment processing. But credit cards are a little bit dumb. You know, you have a transaction for a dollar amount, you swipe the card, the card approves the transaction, you're done. Healthcare doesn't work like that. Healthcare needs more intelligence because you can't just pay in one swipe. You gotta do three, four, five swipes. Uh, when you go to the doctor, when you get the first bill, when you get the second bill, when you get the third bill, when you get the final bill. So our token programs, all that eliminates all those swipes. 
from a patient point of view. Same from a doctor point of view. You can issue a bill and you know you'll get paid. Whether half the tokens came from me, the other half came from insurance company, they all aggregate in your wallet and, and it becomes cross-border currency for payment. Then you got the institutional issue. How do I uh, you know, attract people to join my trial, for example, using the trial example? So do I pay you when you enroll? Do I pay you when you show up for your first you know, intervention or first clinic visit? Or do I pay you at the end of your fifth visit? Do I pay for your ride to the hospital? All those various forms of compensation and subsidies get normalized to solve very, very easily. You could do it without solve, but it's going to be really, really expensive. And sometimes to pay somebody $10, you may have to spend 20 bucks to make the payment. We eliminate all that noise. So that's the second issue. The third uh, advantage is a community who is building on a platform, they can earn solve. So I could be a kid in Vietnam who comes up with a really great MRI viewer as a care card. I can publish that onto the care marketplace and I can earn solve from anybody who uses that card to view MRIs in India or in Indonesia or in Indiana, I'm gonna have a common currency to get paid no matter where I live, where I work. So we wanna open up a global community of excited innovators to make healthcare better. So they can use Solve as a, as a token. And right. then last but not the least, there's a platform gas fees, node fees are all based in Solve. So miners get paid in Solve. So I can be a miner and an institution and a doctor. So everybody can be a node operator uh, and a proof of competency node operator. So there's many ways people can earn money and also build trust into the organization into the whole ecosystem. Okay. So in a nutshell, we designed SORT to simplify healthcare. Healthcare is really complex. Healthcare payments are even more so. So even if we simplify 10% of healthcare payments, you know, we expect at that point in time, solve is a top 10 coin in the world because there's so much complexity and waste in healthcare payments. And healthcare payments are 8,000 billion a year. You fix 10% of that, you're talking about $800 billion a year in annual spend that you have to, that you streamline on solve. Of course, we are not committing or projecting we'll get to 10% or 20 or two, but the point is the opportunity to streamline $8,000 billion a year is why we are confident that Solve token, is, which is designed to do exactly that, will eventually replace a lot of very custom and cumbersome payment processes. Because Solve fixes a lot of this chaos in healthcare. So that leads me to my last question here, Pradeep. What are the top five things that you would like our community to remember after this interview? So first is that healthcare is big and recent Horowitz is very correct in saying that the next biggest company in the world will indeed solve the healthcare issues. We agree with them. We've been working with that vision for six plus years before we even understood that we shared a vision with them, but we are going to keep executing and we have a head start on the market and, we, and the clients who are using our platform love it. So we are quite excited about the fact that the smarter people than us have bought into the same exact need and opportunity and solution. So that's one thing I want you to take away that we may be saying to you what we believe in, but others are saying the exact same thing. And those others I respect greatly um, because they are backed by solid research. The second is that we are all about adoption now. We are not so much in the build phase. Building will always carry on. You always have something new to do. And we have recently started to incorporate AI-based technology into our chain itself so that you can call upon that as part of events moving on the chain. And you can analyze events using AI. All that's coming, but you will always have something to build. We are really focused on use right now. So our focus is on adoption by institutions, by hospitals, by pharma, by CROs, which are called clinical research organizations, by third party administrators, accountable care organizations, and governments. So we are seeing adoption by the B2B market, the B2G market, and we have a ton of B2C networks coming, which will be relevant to grandma. The third thing that I want to talk about is the solve is designed to simplify healthcare payments. And if there's one thing you can say about healthcare payments that so they're complex and expensive, and we simplify them and we make them very, very cheap. What used to cost me at Blue Cross when writing checks to doctors, easily $25. Now you can do for about 2.5 cents. So we add a lot of value in payment processing in healthcare. And it's a big market, $8 trillion a year. And we are, we are uniquely qualified to simplify payments in healthcare. But the fourth thing I want you to take away, the solve care is actually dragging the entire 
blockchain and crypto industry to enterprise adoption. We built a platform for B2B2C adoption. We knew that B2B adoption will lead to B2C usage. So we built the B2B2C adoption use case from day one. And we didn't just build a blockchain and look for a use case. We first understood the use cases of healthcare and then realized blockchain can help. So we are on the forefront of enterprise adoption of blockchain in a meaningful way. And we are bringing crypto with us. And the last is there's an opportunity for everybody to play. Whether you're a patient or a physician or an innovative coder or you know Python scripting or you just like to play around with great user experience or you just have a family member who could, you know, who's suffering from a rare disease and needs to participate in a trial, we have a solution or a, an opportunity for everybody on the planet. Whether you have a disease or you provide care or you are an innovator or an IT, um, um, you know, a developer or anybody, you can, you have a role. You have a role in the software ecosystem as a as an author, as a tester, as a developer, as an integrator, as a uh, community member, as a patient user of the care wallet, as a physician user of the care wallet. So there is nobody on the planet that we are not relevant to. Um, it's only a matter of time before everybody will be using the care wallet because you know what? Everybody has somebody who needs healthcare. If it's not you, then it's your parents, it's your children, it's your friends, it's your family members, it's your neighbor. Everybody needs healthcare. And we are a healthcare platform on blockchain. And we are a healthcare token on blockchain that makes it easy to pay and afford healthcare. So you're gonna be hearing more about us, but get involved, get engaged, reach out to us. We have a role for you to play in the community. That's all the questions that I have for you today. I think that uh, those five items are definitely some key takeaways for the audience. Thank you so much again, Pradeep, for coming on the channel. As always, I really enjoyed interviewing you, hearing more about your project, what we can expect, what we can look forward to. Was there anything else you wanted to leave off with? Nick, it's a pleasure to be with you. It's, uh, your show is amazing. We follow it. It's an honor to be here. You have a great audience. So hello, everyone. And again, thank you for supporting Nick and we are looking forward to being back in the future. So thank you for having me today. Thanks again, Pradeep. You have yourself a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you, Nick. Take Thanks, care. Everyone. hope you enjoyed that video guys make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button if you're interested in seeing some more crypto reviews and exclusive international blockchain events we are the channel for that guys as you know thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video